Issue 3. Of course Rick's plan works, and they end up in the river Styx for believing in Zeus. I'd hate to think you'd have to believe in Zeus in particular to get to any afterlife. With that kind of system, almost nobody would be sent there. He also says you have to be extra good. Then why is Rick here? I guess the mad scientist who can do anything. He's actually done more good than evil. And we just don't get to know about the good because they think it wouldn't make an interesting story. Rick says the second law of science is in one of those afterlives. So they've just gotta constantly die. Somehow Rick expects Morty to have a coin for Sharon when he didn't. Boy, the hat really does make him dumb because he doesn't explain to him that the souls have the coins. Otherwise, how would they have the coins? Conveniently, he has a coin from Blips and Chints. Why does Sharon even expect coins? Won't he just let people in anyways? Because almost nobody would have coins. Morty desperately hands him a piece of his shirt as I wonder why Rick never secretly gave Morty a coin and Sharon threatens him as a muscular dude and Rick bravely fights him right away and tells Morty to hit him with a paddle and then paddle the canoe away. If it's that easy, Sharon should be expecting this. He shouldn't even try anymore. Everyone would do this. Morty is nice enough to apologize and then out of nowhere, we see Tammy from the show again and she's collecting souls in a boat. Rick stupidly reminds her that he shot her and somehow expects her to get him and Morty out of the canoe and onto her boat. He even makes honking noises, which is kind of funny. At least his stupidity is justified by his hat. Tammy tells her golem person partner to attack and the two of them end up in the water. Then we see other universe Rick and Morty from London centuries ago. Rick says they're at the gate and Mortid calls him master and opens the door seeing an angry mob against science, led by a guy who bores me talking too much. Mortid wastes time agreeing with the mob before using magic surprisingly, sending gas out while he holds his breath. Rick can do anything, I'm sure he gave him magic. We see Rick with a gas mask and he tells him to gather them up. He says that if the Think Giver likes his little followers so much, he can spend forever with them. The real Morty wakes up, and Morty and him are covered in bandages except below the head, and he says he mummified him. How does the writer come up with plots like this? I mean, they're going from the Cronenberg dimension to the River Styx to here? This is creative. He also says something that makes me wonder why Morty's still alive. So this arc is just confusing. But at least it's really interesting. It turns out they're here because they drowned in the river Styx. Rick says there's infinite afterlives, and they approach an Egyptian god, I guess. Morty says that they're doomed if they're being judged by whether their hearts are pure. For the most part, Morty's clearly supposed to be seen as a good person if you see the show and read the comics, and the only reason he does anything wrong is usually Rick's fault. So it's not really fair. Rick thinks that maybe their morality is different in other afterlives, since he's desperate. Go figure Rick's judged poorly. Rick says that whoever decides sin hasn't lived, and the scale below his heart cracks the earth open. And Morty runs away with Rick saying that they got a deity killed. But since they can just die and safely move to another place, should I even be invested in what's going to happen to them? They're fine no matter what. If this applies to everybody, then Anubis isn't gone forever either. If he's a powerful god, then you'd think he could just come back right away. Then we see a universe where Morty is the CEO and says to increase emissions for money. He says he doesn't care about the environment, even though he likes checking in with the polar bear. And go figure, he sees the polar bear trapped on an ice floe. He's told not to go out there because the earth is flooding. He opens the gate and water goes over to him because he's in a very low to sea level place as he regrets not saving the world and making money instead. Rick says in a tube that's because he sucks. Morty wakes up and reveals that he was watching that padding because he says the name of that polar bear. They're in a place where anytime someone gets hurt, they just regenerate their injuries. Rick's happy to be in Valhalla and boasts that because no one actually owns Thor, they can show him off as an idiot for all that matters. Morty angsts about his vision and wonders if he's lived too much of Rick's life and put aside personal growth. Morty wants to go off on his own and gets told to meet him in the Bardo where you get reincarnated when he gets lost. It figures Crumbopolis Michael would love Valhalla. 
Morty just tells Odin to kill him and send him to another afterlife, which is weird and annoying with too much boring dialogue. Rick wastes a ton of our time too, getting told by another cheap cameo to just die normally to get his answer in the place where there's nothing. That's what he's been doing. And how could he go to the place where there's nothing just to somehow come back? There's infinite afterlifes, so it'd be pretty convenient if dying enough would quickly get him back to normal. Rick conveniently goes to a dark dimension where he sees some writing in front of him that all things want to live. Well, duh. How is that a law of science? That's not even true. After our time's completely wasted, Rick gets told by a pickle Rick that the first time he came here, not the pickle somehow, he tried to turn himself into a pickle to escape. How'd that let him escape? He died, but he is him. No, he's not. This writer isn't even trying to make sense anymore. He thinks he can get away with anything. Somehow, the pickle's able to tell him exactly where Rick's version of Morty is. And, Rick is conveniently able to create a portal and go through it for no reason. Or maybe it was created by someone else. The pickle Rick goes through it and fights for him, and Morty says he's a freak, just instantly end up back to normal just because he said a poem because apparently this is a dumb weird universe where even mortals can cast spells. Rick says he fixed Pickle Rick's portal gun. How? With what? He also knows that to go back to life, they have to go to Cartoon Heaven. They go there with a portal because there's infinite universes. Not that I see a portal behind them. And they desperately ask to become avenging angels so that bad people would face justice. And because of an unsatisfying Deus Ex Machina, or I guess Chekhov's gun because Rick is using his lifelong experience with the multiverse to know how to go here. They're told yes, but the Deus Ex Machina is that they're told yes instead of sent to hell. I guess because the reason this guy's in heaven is because he's just that forgiving. Or he's that pragmatic. Because it'd be better to make good use of someone than punish them. So they fly over to the Cronenberg world where they see Elliot again, and turns out he can turn giant too. So what took him so long? Rick creates another portal, and then there's a text box saying that this is the home dimension, not Morty's original world. Morty doesn't know what to do with his wings, and Rick says he can just rip them off. I guess because they really don't want to lie on them when they're trying to sleep? After all, they can just put on jetpacks if they want to fly. Even the writer admits that he doesn't know what the non-C-137 world is called, and he had to use Wikipedia. So the wings and some of the hat get removed near Jerry. There's some narration insulting Rick, and Summer congratulates Rick for taking off some of the hat and gets thanked for it and called the best. We say just Morty, as Morty plans on reaching for the remains of the hat to take what's his. And doesn't Morty know that the hat was making him stupid? And so wearing remains of it would make him stupider? Rick says he's got enough brain power left to find out the third law of science is inside of Morty's mind. Why would it be put there? You'd think that if the first law of science was carved into an easily accessible pencil, all of them would be. This is nonsense. Morty thinks that with Rick's intelligence, he'll feed the hungry. I hate how Rick looks here. Then the bad guys with the hats show up, calling Rick a demonic science phony. I can understand Rick and Morty being called phonies if it's because they're impersonating the ones originally from this universe, but how would they know that? The story ends with Jerry tied up, and Morty walking away wearing some of the hat. In the next issue, there's a beginning right away that's hard for me to care about enough to talk about because instead of starting off where the previous issue ended, it starts out in a different universe where a giant thank giver attacks the city, and then we see some ridiculous looking Rick and Morty superheroes, and Rick wants to give his and Morty's lives up so that his dimension will survive. And then we see Morty sadly looking down at a book full of comic panels, which he was reading in math class and somehow getting away with it when he's right in front of the teacher. And after this seems to be just boring narration, wasting my time with angsty exposition I already know. Somehow classes out early because Morty got a new hat. Morty knows that at least when he's on another planet, he knows that it's not supposed to fit in. Jessica asks if he needs help picking up his stuff. And Morty's narration reveals that it's not easy for him to love a human because his idea of what's attractive got weird six planets ago. 
Jessica then brings things down by wasting time trying to say that she can't be this weird figure he obsesses about. As if that would accomplish anything. So she isn't oblivious to it after all. That's realistic, but I'd rather that not be the case. He realizes that he shouldn't even want to fit in with normal people because he doesn't even like them because they're bullies. It turns out Rick interpreted the third law of science literally, and he's wasting time telling him not to freak out instead of just waiting until he goes to sleep, uploading his mind to the computer so that when he does this to him, he could just bring him to a clone to wake him up afterwards like nothing ever happened. Why doesn't he just give him Project Phoenix for a little bit if he didn't already have it like every Morty in the Citadel of Rick's in the end of Season 5? After we see the blonde guy who flirted with Beth in one episode get told by her over the phone that he gets to be Morty's stepdad, I like that he's aware of the fact that that'll get some complex feelings out of him, so he's smart and considerate. Then he screams at seeing Rick run after Morty, with Rick firmly grasping the idiot ball doing something he'd never do. I can only assume it's because he wants a challenge. It was satisfying that he said, What's the matter, Morty? Got more navel-gazing bullshit to think about? Yeah, it was boring me. Rick gets distracted because he had hurt someone by accident. Then he justifies that he could bring him back to life after he's smart enough to do so. He throws a chainsaw that grows robotic arms to hold him still. Then surprisingly, after Rick wastes a bunch of time talking to him, an ambulance crashes behind him, and the bad guys with hats distract him by talking a lot, making no sense. Their heads are conveniently indestructible, he says he's getting sent into a dunce portal, and Morty says Rick's gone. So he needs help from people getting away from the wall, and a whole page is wasted on his family being sad. Even Morty's irrationally sad about it. So a whole bunch of time is wasted, showing Morty growing up and eventually making an animated series just to be sad about seeing stuffed animals and someone holding up paper advertising a Rick the Baby Years idea. It especially makes sense because if he was younger, he'd be a lot more restricted in what he can do. So it's just Rick and Morty except way more creatively limited. So he runs out of the room. I didn't even bother looking at his comic panels because they're colorless with a bad art style. It's not like it's Sonic and it's just a work of fiction within fiction. He looks pathetic, living in an apartment and planning on wasting time sending the perfect comic book to the president as a threat. He goes to bed and then gets confronted by a Rick who says he needs to get the third law of science from him and then go home. So why was he left alone for all those years? He's told the bat won't help him, even though if he hit Rick with it, it would. Rick says that he means Holman's in Rick's dimension because he was never his Rick. He tells Morty that his own Rick died in a nursing home and he never saw him. Rick says this kind of comic's about being realistic. Morty runs away from him and jumps out the window onto a car. And yet he's standing up just fine the next panel and able to get into the car. That's not realistic. He sees Rick's spaceship going after him in his rearview mirror, crashes into a tree, and again, he's conveniently able to run out of it just fine. Morty runs towards a place with a caution sign and gets shocked. There's a meltdown and the world gets destroyed, and then we see it's just a comic book held by a realistic Morty who rants about this. Of course he would rant about this. He was just told it was being realistic, and then that happens. The writer's probably under the impression that Morty's wrong about all of this, but portraying a character as a straw man when he complains about shitty writing doesn't make him actually wrong. It's better to just not have panels like this at all, use them properly. The realistic Morty thinks he's a genius for no reason, and ignores his Rick complaining that he twisted his ankle again. He thinks that if he's a Morty, then the third law of science would be with him too. So Rick shows up behind him, and thankfully there's a discretion shot. Then we see Morty reading a comic, and he says that it's some violent stuff. So a lot of this was just a comic book Morty was reading, because it's a wild coincidence that he found a comic that detailed everything that happened, because it came from another universe. Why shows any of that? Most of it was just completely generic. It makes a lot more sense that Rick would do this to a Morty other than his. He says that it took him two Mortys and a fight through a prison dimension 
but he got his skull, and he chose the two saddest seeming Mortys to do it. He also calls Morty buddy and says he wasn't gonna hurt him, of course. I still wish he didn't have any stains on him, though. I don't know why that's ever shown. He says that somehow the law of science is sketched in there, and it says all things must die. So that's not true either, because Ricks can make themselves immortal, and plus, if it's an actual thing, then it can't die, because inanimate objects don't die. So the hat conveniently jumps off him for no reason. At least write it so that he figures out how to get it off him, and does so. He says he's gonna invent that ass-warming car, and it's sweet to see Morty excited about it. He calls him Buddy, and I wonder why reading All Things Must Die would cause him to remember all of his science knowledge. The bad guys immediately know he got the hat off and go after him. How did they know that? I guess they had a beeper go off automatically because of it? Rick shows off with some robotic hands and says he has anti-dunce serum for no apparent reason. Somehow one of them assumes Jerry is strong and not weak, even though he doesn't look it. A bad guy says that he's learned that Rick loves his Morty, go figure. He must have not researched him for very long if this is news to him, and kidnaps him in a spaceship, and tells Rick from a distance to follow him. Morty had no reason to think he was friends with one of the bad guys. The story ends with a thank giver saying it's time to take back the gift of intelligence from Rick. Since when do these last five issues? That's a sign of poor pacing. Morty has some relatively negative reactions to the thank giver, calling him out and saying he doesn't like being called little assistant. The thank giver says that without Rick, Morty wouldn't have licked a hallucinogenic lion. How does this guy know everything? How could he handle it and not immediately decide to get rid of his omniscience afterwards? He wouldn't be able to focus on anything he's doing, and most knowledge is unattainable. He complains that Ricks could have been the saviors of their planet, which at least shows that he had good intentions. I guess he means savior in general, not literally just someone who saves their planet, because Rick has saved planets before, in the show for example. So he has to mean, they could have been good guys. The thank giver says that the Council of Dunce aims for a reality where no one learns. That no one would learn how to do surgery and cure anything. No one would even learn how to hunt a mammoth, so humanity would go extinct. He's stupid. He wants to erase the genius of a Rick and give it to a kinder soul. So he does want people to learn? That's very altruistic, so why does he have such an altruistic goal if he also wants to make a reality where humanity is going to go extinct instantly. He's not really thinking anything through. The thank giver is sure that Rick won't come for him, for some reason. A bad guy says that working with Nun Zummill is great because he's got enough to pay his student loans. And he can move out of his apartment. Too bad he's doing something awful to look at. He got humanized right before Rick crashed his spaceship into him and fights with a mecha saying that Morty's important to his brand. Why did someone waste time telling him to cease hostilities? Then Rick gets threatened with a robot that runs ahead and unplugs his extension cord. So he falls down a hole with his pants falling down, and Rick sees a sign in front of Liquid Knowledge telling him not to suck at it. So an entire page is wasted on boring nonsense. A lot of this arc isn't worth talking about. That's what happens when the writing isn't trying to be easy to follow hard enough. The villain really is an idiot, he should have just had the sign say, It's poisonous to drink. It wasn't fun to see Rick's face punch him because of what was behind it, but it was very impressive how creative his go-go expando flesh attack was. It doesn't matter though, because he just gets thrown into a glass of liquid knowledge, instead of thrown into literally anything else. He predictably absorbs the knowledge he's connected his head to, and ends up freeing all of the Mortys. Sure is convenient that liquid knowledge is even possible. It'd make a bit more sense if he could, like, plug himself into a computer. Then a lot of stuff I have no reason whatsoever to care about happens. Can this end already? I know the main characters are gonna win. Anyways, Rick ends up in space, and he grabs Morty with a robot tentacle to save him and put him in a liquid knowledge hat to protect him. Rick also saved some tiny bird persons because he thought they were cute. That's nice. 
A laser supposedly hits Rick. Rick gets thanked for saving some Rick's brains. How do they know which one he is? He sees the tiny cowboy bird people as well. The thank giver says that he killed him, so why is he here? He says now they exist in their shared minds. How are their minds shared? Is this a ridiculous collective unconscious idea that Rick mocked in his story? Then a huge amount of other Ricks show up and attack the big bad guy with lasers. Eventually, he gets defeated at some point. I'm not exactly motivated to care about what happens when there's gore, so I don't feel like being detailed. It's so obvious you should just have cartoon slapstick where he gets slapped around a bunch after everything we got put through. Morty wishes he and Rick could just fix worlds instead. And he cleverly says they could say they did it for fun, and just to say they did. Fortunately, Rick changes his mind about being opposed to it and decides to humor him just to prove Think Giver wrong. It makes me wish they did good things like this a lot more often. Why can't they just be heroes at least half the time? It's too depressing and annoying for Rick to always be a bad guy. Or even mostly be a bad guy. It seems like his motive in the comic is usually money, which doesn't make any sense because it's so effortless for him to get money. So we see Morty use giant stitches to sew up a crack in the floor of the Cronenberg world. But why? That's barely gonna do anything. That's not gonna fix it. They need to turn them back into humans. Best thing Rick could do in a short amount of time would be to turn them all to Mortys. The next panel tries to make this look saccharine and sappy as we see Morty watering some cabbages for people. And the story ends with the main bad guy in an afterlife, with other deities killed by Rick. I wish they didn't say they could escape eventually. It just tries to ruin the ending. This arc... I feel like this arc sucked. It just didn't make any sense at all. How did Rick get his intelligence back just because he read a sentence? Why didn't he just have a way to automatically have his intelligence restored after a long enough time without it? There's so many things about this that don't make any sense. It, it feels like early Penders style weird bad writing. It's like Sonic Live style. Where it's very interesting. I'm grateful for the fact that most of the time I'm just describing what's happening so I can actually get a move on constantly. I'm still really confused the whole time, but at least it was interesting. It's just, a lot of this isn't memorable. They die, but conveniently there's infinite afterlives and you go to another afterlife after you die in the other afterlife. I wouldn't expect that, it's pretty convenient, but it's also kind of creative and brilliant at the same time. But it's kind of the writer writing himself into a corner and then trying to bumble a way to get them from one place to another. They wasted a whole bunch of time with some pointless work of fiction in fiction where we see Morty angsting in a comic. They could have just had Rick use a clone of Morty that was already in the basement and he could get the Law of Science from there. The pacing was terrible and it didn't really make any sense. It's too bad, because I was really looking forward to this series. But really, the whole concept of Rick losing his intelligence, of any character losing their special skill, all does is result in a creatively limited story, because they're not able to do as much as usual. So maybe that's not the kind of story that should be written. It's written to show how a character can inventively succeed without their power, but Rick was extremely lucky that he did get things back to normal. It was only because of his smartness earlier getting himself prepared so that he could do something to get his intelligence back. He didn't succeed because of something other than his intelligence. It's not like he had to, for example, play baseball to get his intelligence back and beat the bad guy using a skill other than being a genius at science.